Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got uh, a very exciting product to talk about. I'm gonna be using Tati Beauty's new Blendiful Puffs. I'm like, wait, puffs, sponges? They're called Blendifuls. When I first saw that Tati Beauty was coming out with a sponge or a makeup application thing, I, I was like, okay, cool. You know, we got another sponge coming out. Let's see what it's all about. Maybe it'll be like a different shape or something. But when I saw that it was this type of tool and when I saw how, like in her video, how she described how you can use it, I thought, wow, I really like this idea. I love the fact that you can use this same sponge for so many different applications. It is uh, the Blendiful. This is the product that it came in. Thank you, Tati, for sending it to me. Uh, it was sent to me in PR. This is the Blendiful. And you can use this to apply basically your entire face. So uh, primer, she did specify a pore filling primer, not like a moisturizing primer. Primer, foundation, concealer, um, contour, bronzer, blush. I'm gonna be doing liquid blush today so we can kind of test everything out. Um, setting powder, I'm sure I'm forgetting something else here, but you can basically do your whole face routine with this um, product. So very excited about that. I hope this year that I, I just, I hope this year is all about innovation and I hope we're seeing new things, even if it's like she said in her video, maybe a product that's already existing, but a different spin on it and a different way that you can use it. Um, I've been trying to incorporate more puffs into my foundation routine and setting because as you guys know, I don't always set my whole face. I haven't set my whole face in a long time, but I'm really trying out a lot of new techniques and stuff to see what looks best on my skin. So it comes with this sponge and then also there is the little one, which is so cute. This is the baby. Is it the baby Blendiful? Um, and this one she talked up. I mean, how cute is this? This one she talked about basically as a touch up kind of tool. So to bring with you, if you want to touch up your face, I'm pretty excited. I feel like if I like this, then I'll like this. And I believe she said this one is softer than this one. Yeah, I definitely feel softer. But she was saying you can kind of just like buff if you feel like you need a buff. Maybe if your foundation is collecting in like smile lines or something like that throughout the day, you can kind of just buff it out or tap it out and blend it to do a touch up throughout the day. So this is very cute. I'm gonna be doing a fairly standard routine here, products that I'm pretty familiar with so I can see how they apply differently. And the first product that I wanna apply, which I was thinking, I was like, oh, it'd be, I wonder if you can apply the primer with it. And when I saw her video, you can. So she did specify to use a pore filling primer, which this one definitely is a pore filling primer. This is the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I'm trying to like plan out my real estate here on how I wanna use this sponge, figure out the best way here. I think I'm gonna use the primer on here because I wanna save this area for my under eyes because it has a nice point to it. I'm gonna go ahead and dip this in here. I don't wanna apply too much. So I like to apply this primer really to the center of the face. Um, I use the Smashbox Primerizer, which is like a primer moisturizer on the rest of my face. Or I already prepped my skin earlier with that. But I do like to apply a uh, pore filling primer to the center of my face. And then I just like to press a little bit into the nose here. So now I'm gonna be applying foundation with this. And I'm gonna use a foundation I'm very familiar with. This is the Armani Luminous Silk shade 3.5 her i think i heard somewhere that it was only machine washable and i was just like oh i don't know about that because if you want to use it every day it's almost like i'm not doing a load of laundry every single day you know that's a little bit excessive for me uh, i like to have typically at least three sponges that i can like switch out wash one every day i'm okay with washing a sponge in the sink every day but you can actually wash this with soap and water in the sink so what I would do if I was using this every day, probably wash it each time I use it, fully wash, because you're gonna use pretty much the whole sponge, and then maybe once a week throw it in the washing machine just to like really get a deep clean on it. So now I'm gonna apply foundation on the other corner. Gosh, this feels weird doing it with this. I don't know why. I don't want to... I'm so used to stippling. I feel like lately I've been using more like brushes to apply my foundation, like buffing and stippling rather than um, using a beauty blender for the most part. I really want to stipple it in. What do you guys think she's gonna come out with next? I'm so curious. All right, so around my nose, I'm definitely feeling like a more of a stipple moment. So the first couple passes that I did, like actually wiping, I feel weird calling it wiping, wiping it on, I do feel like I could see some of the streaks from the fibers in my foundation, but the more that I'm kind of working it into the skin, the less streaks that I'm seeing. Um, do the forehead, I am gonna get a little crouchy. 
I need another layer of foundation here. I'm still kind of like figuring out if I prefer to buff it or swipe it on. There, swipe is better than wipe. Because typically when you stipple on, it'll have a little bit more coverage than if you buff it in. Okay, so as I was working with this a little bit more, I liked the first pass of foundation to kind of get the overall really light application of the product on my face by um, blending it in. But coming back in on the second part, I definitely like pressing it into the skin. I feel like that had a better effect on me. If I was blending a lot, I noticed it kind of was showing some drier areas. So after testing this out, this is what I would do on my next application. This one was just, we were learning together here. So I like to kind of wipe it very, very lightly just for like the vast application on the face. And then I like to basically finish it with a tap. Um, also, I went in with a little bit more coverage and then I tapped on where I want extra coverage and I feel like it gave a really nice finish as you can tell here. I don't take my foundation all the way up to my under eye, um, but I think it looks pretty good and I feel like pressing it in for me is definitely key. My skin's a little bit more on like the dehydrated side. So foundation can tend to catch on drier areas. So that's why I think using this method, the tapping definitely helped. I think it just has a really nice finish to it. I do have a couple little fuzzies coming off here, but I think it looks really nice, especially around my nose. My nose is definitely like a press that shit in. Press it in. Okay, so now we're gonna do concealer. I'm actually gonna apply my concealer with a brush, a concealer brush. I'm gonna mix a couple different colors here. I feel like this is gonna be the year of like lighter coverage foundations are gonna come popping out, which is funny because I think maybe the beginning of last year and the second half of 2017, I felt like it was the most full coverage concealers. I meant to say foundation. You could possibly find were coming out like the Jouer one, which I actually, for a super full coverage concealer foundation, I thought looked really good on the skin. Uh, what else came out that was like super full coverage? Huda Beauty, uh, that one was definitely like a super full coverage moment. But I feel like this year is gonna be the year of like, let's uh, let's pull back on the coverage. Let's work on some different formulas, maybe a little bit lighter coverage, and then work with concealer to kind of like cover up specific areas instead of doing full coverage on the entire face. So this should be interesting to see how this blends out. Um, on the under eyes. It's gonna be the year of just lighter coverage, less coverage, less products, maybe not less products. You know, I know a lot of people gave me crap for my no foundation video and I used four concealers, which I feel like people focused heavily on the fact that I used four concealers, but I didn't use a lot of each one. You know, one of them was just like a dot on the inner corner just for color correcting. So I still stand by that routine. I love it, I'm here for it still. Now I'm gonna take this part before this concealer dries of the sponge and we're gonna be pressing in. I'm dabbing, my hand is floating. My hand is floating. We're dabbing, we're pressing. I mean, it's definitely working into the skin really nicely here. I'm gonna pick it up a notch because I was freaking yapping a little bit too heavily there. I mean, yeah, this is definitely a winner for me in terms of um, under eye concealing and blending for sure. I'm loving how it's lightly buffing it into my foundation. It's not uh, one of my worst nightmares. I mean, not actual worst nightmare, but is when my sponge or product, like sometimes if it's too wet, it can actually lift the concealer and the foundation underneath it off of your face. And I feel like there's no risk of that happening here. So I really like that, but look at this, you guys. This is great. Brightener on the under eyes. You guys know I'm a mixer. Like this is just who I am. I don't feel bad about it. This is just who I am. Let's see how it does when there's another layer on top. Cause you know, that's my, that's all my vibe. It's very bendy. I like that it's not a perfect circle. You can get into other areas better. All right, second layer of concealer. Nothing is lifting, love that. That would be the only thing that would make me nervous about this is if um, it started to lift product off of the face. But so far it's just blending everything in together beautifully. Even right here where I have a little bit of like the tiny, tiny little dots, sometimes it gets lifted off of there. I'm not seeing anything. Very impressed with the under eye. Under eye concealing 
is definitely fantastic for sure. On the first try, like no learning curve required in that area. So I think maybe the only area where I'm not gonna want to buff is down the nose. I can blend this out right here and this actually fits really well and helps to diffuse the concealer right here between the brows. Okay, this is working. I took it and I pitched it like this and now I'm tapping down the center of the nose. That worked great, actually. I need to stop downing it, huh? Dude, I was about to set before I did my liquid blush. Story of my life, that always happens to me. Okay, <sighs> hurry. I'm gonna take some liquid blush. I'm using the Flower Beauty one because I'm very familiar with this formula. Um, and I'm gonna mix cinnamon, oh, cinnamon. Cinnamon? That's not the color I want, okay. Mess. I need pinched. All right, I can't find pinched. This is nectar and make a liquid blush on my hand. And let's go, I'm gonna go back in with the foundation side because I'm not gonna be using that part again. So this should be interesting. Wow. Yes, super happy with how this is going on. You guys, this looks so good. It's literally like, I love that it's pressing into the skin. Normally I would use like a, like a flat top or um, one of those IT Cosmetics brushes. Look at this. First of all, that color combination is really giving it to me too, nectar and bubbly. But look, I mean, it's just like, it looks like it's in. Everything is getting pressed into the skin. I'm actually standing up really close here so you can see. I'm super happy with how this is looking. This might actually get me to use more liquid blushes more often. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is lightly set my under eyes. It started creasing a little bit there and I just kind of lightly buffed it out with um, the tip of the sponge. Now I'm gonna use that same spot that I used for applying concealer. Uh, I'm still gonna do bronzer with this as well. I don't know where, but okay. Here we go. Shake off some of the excess. This is the Pat McGrath powder, by the way, um, light one. Press. I might have used a little too much powder. I'm gonna use a little bit less on this side. I kind of went in over there. But I like that I can kind of put some powder on the side of this and actually stamp it into the nose as well. I put way too much powder on this side. I got a little crazy. I'm gonna actually remove some of this on this side. The last step for this product, um, for the um, Blendiful, is cream bronzer. So because I have been like, you know, chatting my face off throughout this video, I would typically do bronzer and then maybe conceal and then set, but you know, I got excited. So this is, let's see what I use. I use this for foundation and blush. This was primer, concealer here. And now I'm gonna use this area over here. Let's see if I can do that without getting powder in it for a little bit of cream bronzer. I'm not gonna lie, initially I was like, I don't wanna use this for cream bronzer. I don't, it just didn't feel safe to me, but I'm feeling much safer now the blush application blew me away. I don't know if you guys felt the same way, but I thought it looked amazing. I'm actually gonna wipe off some of this powder now. I'm gonna be using one that I've really been liking lately, the Tom Ford Intensity One Shade and Illuminate. I'm gonna go ahead and tap into here. I'm gonna have, I'm applying most of the product to the top edge and then letting it kind of diffuse down. Okay. I don't know why I put so much product on there, but the one part that's making me nervous is like, don't get my setting powder like mixed in with this, you know? Like if I could go back now, I would do the setting powder part last. So I would bronze before I did my under eyes. Putting the most product on the outer edge of the face and then slowly start pulling it down without adding any extra product to the puff. This looks really good. See how we like it. This is definitely pretty warm to use to contour, but I'm just gonna use a little bit. Definitely blends out really nicely. 
I mean, that looks pretty damn good. If, cause I'm just like folding up this round sponge here and I feel like I'm still able to have a lot of control with it. So now this side is gonna be a little bit harder for me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, how do I hold this? My left hand is completely useless to me, but if I hold it a different way, like, maybe I turn it upside down. All right, so that was probably the most difficult part because normally when I apply um, bronzer, I use a brush and not a sponge. And because of where I put it on the sponge, it made it a little bit difficult because it was kind of my last step here. So I didn't have a ton of real estate left. I feel like it's almost like Tetris, kind of trying to figure out like exactly where you want to put everything but I'm sure that just comes with like using it a couple times. But I am impressed, like I'm honestly very, very impressed with the application of all these products on top of my face. I'm like, wow, my cheeks are looking very smooth right now. I'm gonna try and do this with this one today. This is the uh, Monica Dar Flawless Finish Dual Powder in the shade C3. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. and set right here. It's like a tad brighter. What do you think? Is that powder a little bit too light to use right there? This is literally my first time using that one <laughs> for right here. I'm not mad at it. I gotta see like what it looks like out in like daylight and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and do like my lip, finish up my eyes off of camera and then we'll come back and wrap this up. All right, you guys, I have good news. I decided to risk it all and put on a little bit more. I used the liquid blush on top of already setting my cheeks. I put a tiny bit on undetectable. I mean, that's amazing. I think maybe because of Beauty Blender when you wet it, sometimes that can mess with it. But I feel like this was just like, okay, let me just take a little bit of that blush. Let me set it on your face and you'll be on your way. The only thing that I'm seeing here is I definitely have a lot more powder under my eyes and I think I just put on more than I normally do. I don't know why I got a little carried away there. Set a little bit of hydration to the skin. How are we feeling? I feel airbrushed right now. Um, there are a few steps of this that really blew me away. I would say the concealer on top of the foundation, that application, the smoothing process of that, wow, amazing. The liquid blush, I think, is the one where I'm just like, holy moly. The way that it pressed it into my skin, it didn't look like it was just sitting on top of my cheeks. The only part that I would say maybe has a little bit more of a learning curve to it for me, and maybe I just need to practice it more, is the foundation. I didn't know if I was a swiper, like rub it in kind of thing, or if I was a patter. Like even when I was doing it, I, was, I didn't know what felt right. I did not feel that this absorbed a lot of product, which is great even when you like look at it, it's just, like I wipe my hand on it and it's not really a lot of product comes out of it. So I think that's great that it doesn't absorb a lot. I would say I use the same amount of foundation as I normally do. Um, so foundation application with it, I would probably need a little bit more practice. So I think if you're like, you don't want a full <laughs> container of brushes, this is something that you're probably gonna be very interested in. I think it's really cool that it's such a versatile product instead of having like 15 different puffs for 15 different things. I think it is really cool. I like the size, I like the shape of it. It's very comfortable to have on the hand to use different corners. I think that's pretty awesome. So I'll for sure be using this again. I'll try it out with another foundation, see how I feel. But overall, I would give this a very high score. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below if you guys order this, if you're gonna be checking out, if you plan on ordering it, or if you're like on the fence about it. Um, yeah, let me know. I usually, I tend to be pretty skeptical when it comes to new products like this, but I'm very excited about it. I think it looks awesome. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. <sighs> wow, that was a terrible line. Rolling. Can you put the little, um, you know what I'm talking about?